Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this month, Food and Exercise, Does It Really Help My Mental Health? So you're all very welcome for people that are just joining us and will be able to catch up on the recording as well. So my name is Killian, and I'm working with Midwest Aries and I'm delighted to be joined by some great panelists who will be introducing themselves in just a moment or so. So today's topic is a topic that I'm really passionate about as well on food and exercise. And I think it's going to be a great discussion, a broad, open discussion on maybe some positive things we can do to incorporate physical activity and healthy, nutritious foods into our day to day. And maybe you will be able to look at time management and different things that can have a positive impact on including exercise, physical activity or whatever that looks like to you into your day or week or whatever way you want to look at the exercise and fitness. So just a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, the discussion will be about an hour long. It'll be a panel discussion. There's a Q&A button at the end of your screen. So if you want to start preloading questions at the, uh, now or even during the webinar, we'll try our best to get to all of the questions throughout and hopefully we'll be able to answer the best we can. There is also this webinar will be recorded and will be available on our Midwest Aries YouTube channel uh, towards the end of the week. And it'll also be on Anchor FM on our podcast as well called the Wellness Panel. So if you do have to leave early or if you want to catch up on this webinar again, you can catch it on YouTube and our podcast as well. So towards the end of the webinar, we'll have a guided meditation just to kind of ground ourselves back into the present moments. And yeah, I just I, I missed the part about Midwest Aries if you're attending the workshops for the very first time. Midwest Aries is the recovery education service based in the Midwest. So we cover Clare, Limerick and North Tipperary. So we run workshops in the community and online and I'll share details of our online community workshop and our face to face workshops that are upcoming over the next couple of weeks and months. Also, a big thank you to Mental Health Ireland for the continuous partnership throughout this webinar series. And yeah, it's been great to kind of do different topics over the last number of months. And this is a really popular topic. So we've had a great engagement and great participants or attendees sign up for this webinar. So yeah, I think I've covered everything. So I'm just going to invite the panelists to turn on their cameras and we'll get a round of introductions going. So I hope I covered everything there in the start. So we'll start with Mike, if you want to introduce yourself. How are you doing? Yeah, all good, Killian. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, I definitely wasn't on the last webinar and maybe even the one before, so it's nice to be back on. And um, yeah, so Mike O'Neill is my name. I'm the manager with Midwest Aries and we're the recovery education service here in the Midwest. Thanks, Killian. Lovely. Thanks, Nadia, Mike. Great to have you here. Uh, Christine, we'll start with yourself again. Hi, Killian. Thanks for the introduction there. Um, I'm Christine Gurnett. I'm a senior community dietitian and I'm based in health promotion and improvement. Lovely. Thanks a million, Christine. It's great to have you here and sure your experience and knowledge will be absolutely brilliant. So, and Claire, yourself, we'll go to you next to introduce yourself. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Claire Flynn and I'm the Development Officer with Mental Health Ireland and I cover the region of Limerick, Clare and North Tip. Um, I haven't been on these for a while either, um, so it's great to be back. Thanks for having me and I'm really looking forward to discussing today's topic as well. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Claire. It's great to have you here once again. Uh, so I suppose we'll kick off. Um, again, I'm just going to prompt people at the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, start preloading questions, whatever is on your mind, just to answer that we can answer around fitness or physical exercise, food and exercise, whatever question you have, please put them in now or throughout. So we'll start with the first question. Um, can certain foods improve our mood? So, Christine, will I, uh, you're on mute already. I'll start with yourself, if that's OK. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose there's a lot of science going on right now looking at the connection between our brain and our gut. Um, but what the evidence so far is telling us, there isn't just one food that will be like a pill I can take to make myself feel better. So it's about looking at the basics and making sure we're getting all the nutrients that our body needs to function well and the same for our brain. Does that make sense? Um, I suppose just to think about some of the terms we use around the connection between our head and our body. Has anyone ever heard of the term hangry? Hangry. Yes. So it's yes. a mixture of hungry and angry. And that's exactly what it is. When you get over hungry, you're feeling a bit frustrated. 
uh, you can't concentrate properly and you're definitely going to get angry quite easily. Um, I suppose that's a connection they're right there, you know, and very often the connection between our brain and our gut, it can be circular. So, you know, when you're feeling a bit down, maybe you don't you kind of fall off your healthy eating habits and your exercise habits and things, and then you end up feeling worse. And what do you do then? You go and you maybe get some comfort foods like the chocolates or the biscuits or the ice cream to make yourself feel better. So it is circular. So we need to think about that and maybe just decide to take one small step that might start to change that. So we'd often talk about, you know, I was saying how we have to get a good balance of nutrients for our body and our mind to function right. Fruits and vegetables and whole grains are what we call nutrient dense foods. So they have loads of vitamins and minerals in them. So they are really important and they make the base for our healthy eating plan. So how do we follow this plan? The Irish food pyramid actually is, even though it's a trendy term today, plant-based and the pyramid's been around a long time. Our Irish food pyramid is actually a plant-based model. So the first two groups, if you actually had a pyramid built on the floor in front of you, would take up more than half of the whole area of the pyramid. And they're all plant foods. They're your fruit and your veg and your whole grains. And then in all the other food groups, there are plant options as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, I suppose what's really important though is to do a little thinking and planning around your diet. And if that's the first step you make, that's a good place to be, you know? So you sit down and you think about what am I going to do to change my current habits if they've kind of fallen off the wagon? And pick a few sem simple steps. Always start with small steps, because if we make too many changes all together, then it's not going to last too long. So I would say sitting down, having a good look at your routine and your environment where you work and where you are at home and thinking about small steps you can take to improve your healthy eating and maybe your exercise. One of the big things I will say is don't skip the meals because that's when you get hangry and you're feeling down and low. And um, really important meal is breakfast. So that old adage about breakfast being the most important meal of the day absolutely stands. You're getting up in the morning, you've been fasting all night and your body needs energy. And your brain in particular can't function without some bit of glucose. So it's really important to have breakfast. Now, when I say breakfast, it doesn't have to be a traditional breakfast or a sit down breakfast. It could be grabbing a piece of fruit or taking a quick yogurt with you on the way out the door. Anything at all that you can get that um, energy started in your body so your mind can function as well. Uh, there are lots of other uh, things you can have for uh, when you're hungry, snacks. Having a fruit bowl around the house is a really good idea. And a piece of fruit can often take the edge off if it's not meal time. I think, um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Just kind of the habits and what you're kind of talking about, how to take that small step to just to start or begin eating healthy. But I'm going to go back to the hangry that you were talking about, because I know, Mike, we had a kind of brief discussion before the webinar as well. Yeah, Justin, like, you, were and, and the radio, I, you were saying. Yeah, and I was really looking forward to this, to hear um, Christine come along, to give us the, like a little bit of the science and the evidence to back it up, because there's stuff like that. And I was actually up on yesterday evening, I was saying, sure, what can I say on this, you know, around my own experience, or how does it really measure? Because I don't have, I, I, was, I was struggling with it. And there was a conversation on the radio going home, going home. And when they were talking about yeah, the same thing, being hangry. And, and, and very often it's kind of, and say, but listen, you know, we often heard the phrase, listen to your body, you know. And the cue is you get a little no in your stomach Absolutely. and it's to go and reach out. And as Christine said, if you have the fruit ball handy, that's the healthy option. And um you know, and I agree on the um, the breakfast because I know myself and I suppose when we look at, you know, mental health and I suppose it's like everything, there's a spectrum, you know, where people can have a bad day, but some people can be seriously ill mentally and, um, you know, and, and sometimes linked to depression can be, you know, a loss of appetite and that can be really hard. 
you know, and some people can extreme, uh, you know, we look at weight loss, you can get into then maybe, you know, when you look at then like those, the, the different types of, you know, disorders as well, like kind of where people can develop eating disorders. And some people it can be, you know, using the, the restriction of food as punishment. You know, some people that kind of maybe, well, if my life is out of control, I can control my eating, you know, and, um, you know, because again, I know myself and my own personal experience, it, it is something around, the, the, for me, it was the control piece and controlling my eating. Thankfully, I haven't been there now for a long time, but whereas I would have restricted food um, in a deliberate attempt to control what I couldn't control. But it was how I, how I was responding. I needed to respond to my aspects of my life that was completely out of control. But this was one area I could control, um, you know. So, again, and I suppose it's about, you know, sometimes we were even laughing earlier on. And it is about, like, kind of having the balance, you know, balance what we eat, you, you know. Um, and it is okay to have the treat. And I know for me and my routine is I'm healthy Monday to Friday, and the weekend, I'll have my ice cream, I'll have, you know, I might have a drink, you know, and eat maybe a bag of crisps and relax. But it's with intention of from Monday morning back in the back in the game. And it is about that balance on, on the diet. And as I say, I'm a big advocate. And I was saying here, I know we shouldn't be doing product placement, but it, it is my favorite food. And it's Flavin's porridge. I just love it. Yeah, you know, and um, maybe it's the Waterford man in me coming out, but I have it every morning, winter and summer, and it doesn't matter. I have that's it, um, and I'm disciplined in that, you know. So anyway, Claire, we let you, <laughs> you know, throw in your two cents worth. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, I suppose I've had to work on my relationship with food as well because I was a real emotional eater, you know, particularly when I was my kids were younger and I was going, you know, there was different things going on, so that became my sort of treat and reward and comfort, you know, and as a consequence, I put on a lot of weight, you know, so which then you know, affected my self-esteem and my self-confidence and everything else, so, you know, it was this thing, and you know, over the last couple of years, I've really had to look at that and look at, you know, my emotional connection to food and try to start to break that emotional connection, if you like. And I have, you know, I have, I've been, I've been quite successful. It's still there sometimes, but, um, you know, and it like, uh, you know, as, and I don't, I don't know if it is just from that, that female sort of perspective, but I feel that, you know, that I'm targeted a lot through ads, you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? A lot of stuff around the physical and, you know, how slim you are, or how, uh, this sort of thing, and even exercise, you know, there's so many things targeted. So, I could find it very confusing about like, like there were so many different, if you like, rules or ways. So trying to figure out a way that was going to work for me became incredibly overwhelming at times, do you know? So, you know, as I've gotten older and particularly as I've like, I'm a postmenopausal woman now and different things have been going on for me. So, and do you know what? I have time and I have resources now as well that maybe I didn't have before. I'm maybe getting a bit more serious about it, but what I've learned, what age and, 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 working on that emotional eating for me has taught me is that it, actually the simpler it is the better and like and I love that you're talking about porridge Mike because it's such a simple thing but it has such amazing benefit but you know anyone who's on social media can see all these like overnight oats and this sort of breakfast and that sort of breakfast and it can be like I don't know what to cook for breakfast I'm just going to grab the handiest thing do you know what I mean it can be it can feel very confusing um but just to give you a bit of insight, so so I've come a long way in my journey in that respect. And as I said, the si I found the simplest is probably best. And, you know, just to keep it as simple as I can in terms of just having more vegetables if I can, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but definitely having my meals has been a huge part of it about making sure that I have my breakfast, that I have maybe an apple at you know, mid-morning. And, you know, that has really, really helped me to stay on top of it as well. But I was having a discussion. I have um two granddaughters and one of them is two and a half and she lives in Cork. So whenever I go down to see her you know I'm delighted to see her and obviously I wanted to be a very positive experience for her as well but I realized I said it to my daughter that I realized that actually was tying some of those experiences to food and it just I had a I had a realization for myself that I didn't want to create that connection for her around an emotional connection to food and it's not that we don't have an emotional connection but I didn't want her to associate being happy food makes me happy if you like you know what I mean? I didn't want her to have to maybe go through the like 20 something years that I associated food with being happy when it doesn't make you necessarily happy at all. You know, so just that sort of thing, that sort of that awareness has helped me, I hope anyway, 
so that when I'm spending time with my granddaughter, when I'm going down to see my grandchildren and stuff like that, that it is just about the relationship we have, not necessarily, and, and, and not necessarily about our relationship then to food as well. Um, so, I mean, just to what you're saying, Mike, I mean, isn't it so complex? Like, it's never just a simple subject, is it? That's really good, Sarah. Yeah. And just to come in, yeah, just briefly, Christina, I'll let you come in then. Yeah. It's just, I suppose, what do you think would help? And this is to all the panellists for the amount of information out there at the moment to, I suppose, get the right and correct information for people who may be just starting out, eat healthy eating, starting exercise. Claire, even if you want to come in first, maybe like, how did you like trawl through all that misinformation to get the correct information to start, I suppose? And yeah. anyway, Mike and Christine, please do come in after as well. I suppose it was just that like with age comes a bit of wisdom sometimes, you know what I mean? And just in terms of looking at how I was reacting to things and just trying to unravel for myself and um, what I was being influenced by versus maybe what was good for me. You know what I mean? Um, and because I wanted to lose weight, but more so I was trying to focus on being healthy because looking at losing weight would never really serve me. Whereas when I started, when I changed my perspective, to actually, I just want to actually try to be healthier. You know, so that then led me into, OK, the, what are the healthier choices I can make? And I found like board B, uh, you know what I mean? The HC has good stuff. You know, they're, they're, you know, just going to reputable sources, not necessarily looking at maybe an influencer on social media, if you like. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, sometimes it was recommendations of stuff like that. But, you know, so that is, you know, where I've started to go. But then being a woman who, who's 55 and my body has different needs you know in terms of that as well and what will serve me as I get older as well you know was another perspective that I've recently come into so learning about that so I mean I suppose for within that as well it is an idea of it can depend on I suppose where a person is in life because their nutritional needs like we still need their nutrition but there might be other nutritional needs and like Christine can obviously correct me on this if I'm wrong but just say like if like my daughter like she's breastfeeding at the moment so her nutritional needs you know could be quite specific to what she's currently going through versus myself as a 55 year old woman you know my nutritional needs you know could be you know could be different in some ways and it's not that for me it's the simple stuff stays the same have the vegetables have the fruit you know try and eat healthily as I can but there might be one or two other things that I can pull in that can maybe support me in in trying to be healthy um it's complex though you know what I mean and we've so much information being thrown at us so I found for me anyway just trying to simplify it okay what are the simple things and the food pyramid is actually a great way to do it Christine isn't it I feel yeah, anyway because it it's very simple just eat a lot of this a little bit of that and less of that <laughs> yeah. you know which I, so that that's you how make, you make it so it. much sense there Claire and a lot of what you're saying you know the the thing about body image and women although it's beginning to be for men as well is a huge issue and our life, you know, life stages really do affect what you can eat. And unfortunately, as you get older, you have to reduce your calories, but you still have the nutrient needs. So when I was mentioning there about nutrient dense foods, that what we, that's what we have to be focusing on, you know. Um, yeah, it, it, it's such a complex thing. Everything affects what you eat. I mean, I started off kind of jokingly talking about how we connect, even in language, your your head and your gut and and it's everywhere around you. It's whether you're stressed at work, it's whether you've got a busy family life. It's a lot of people even don't have good confidence in their own cooking skills. So it's easier to get a takeaway or something else. So nobody will critique your cooking, you know? But, and, and this is where I would really encourage people to go online because there's just a wealth of cooking skills and recipes to be got there now. Of course, you do have to check what's healthy and what's not so healthy and I actually have a few recommendations that I'll be making later around where to go for those and there's a really good cookbook called 101 square meals that I'm sure a lot of people have heard of before that has budget friendly healthy easy to make meals and if you are doing a google search put in easy and healthy into the search as well just to kind of filter out some of the other stuff um, but there's no reason to be challenged about your cooking skills anymore. And also, you can use convenience foods in a healthy way. You know, if you are stuck at the end of the day and you want to throw something in the pot and you only have one can of soup left, you probably have some frozen vegetables or some vegetables in the fridge. Toss them in with it. It's going to make it more nutritious and make it go further. And it's a budget meal as well. Even the old... Um, beans on whole wheat toast that's not a bad option either you know 
So there's lots of simple things we can do. But Mike, you were also mentioning about during the week versus the weekend. And I think that's a problem for everybody, you know, because your week is usually very structured and then your weekends not so much, you know. But I would encourage exactly what you were saying there, Mike, you know, to have a plan for the week, at least from Monday to Friday, and just keep things in mind, maybe over the weekend. I know it's more difficult. But I would say, and to me, sort of everything goes back to planning. If you're going to be, uh, by the way, if you're the shopkeeper, if you're the person who does the shopping, you have lots of power, so you can decide what comes into the house in the first place. So you sit down, you make a menu for the week, you take that and build your shopping list from that. If you invest that little bit of time over two or three weeks and change your menu up, you can then just continue to rotate menus. First thing chefs learn in chef school is rotate your menu, you know, um, and then it makes things a lot simpler and it gives you a plan for the week and helps you stay on track. Definitely. Yeah, it's 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 a joke I have at home where I say to my other half and when I'd open the fridge and I would say, will you stop buying food? They'll only eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it is about like, you know, whoever controls, you know, whoever does the shop and controls what goes in. And again, maybe sh don't shop, on, as we all know, don't shop on an empty stomach, you know, because everything looks attractive. You know, you get cravings for stuff you wouldn't eat from one end of the week to the other before you know you're buying it. And, and I think, and I suppose, the, I suppose I'm going to take a little bit of a, a leap here as well. And I'm getting ahead of Killian because he's the, the, the MC today. But I suppose the link between well, when we bring it back to mental health and sometimes even because I know and I suppose I was, um, I suppose, a, a club cyclist for many, many years. And we say when I started, it was all protein and then it became all carbohydrates. So even though I would have always had a very healthy eating pattern, um, I still became mentally unwell. You, you, you know, so so well, it's not the panacea for all ends because like, you, you know, because like the first psychiatrist I ever met, he said to me, I can make you feel better. I can't make your problems go away, you know, and that was the, to, to use medication. And it made perfect sense and gave me great clarity. But I, I suppose while, you know, it can have a preventative piece, but as part of a recovery piece, it probably ha it's just as valuable in helping somebody as much as medication, you, you, you know, and to coming back to that exercise piece. And, um, you know, I, and, and I agree very much with what Claire said as well about that shift and acknowledging that you're older, you, you know, whereas I, I turned 61 a couple of weeks back, you know, and um, so, and it, and it hit me, I, I suppose, COVID hit me hard and around the restrictions and not and whereas i was doing a reasonable amount of cycling and i go for a lovely cycle here in limerick and i go off on my own and i actually refer to it as because it meets a need and i call it my comfort cycle so when we use so so sometimes if we, even if we can change the narrative around like well comfort food so i i go for a comfort cycle rather than comfort food and uh, and at both and I suppose I'm trying to be kind to myself because I have to acknowledge I'm not the, the young fella I was before and I'm not bomb proof. And, uh, and like as Claire said, it's around this kind of stuff. But I'm still struggling coming out of COVID and it's about being kind to ourselves in it. And it comes back to, I think, what Christine said in the very beginning. It's, it's not, don't just dive in. It's the small steps. It's the little bit. Start and you might start feeling, yeah, I'm actually feeling okay today. And it, you will notice, you, you know, um, around, um, you know, li little shifts. Um, and it is so a kind of so for me, I suppose I always had that link between food and exercise because I had to, um, you know, when you're competitive. But as I'm getting older, I suppose I've always had that awareness. But I suppose, you know, when, when we become unwell, I think it's kind of when we figure out what works for us in our recovery. And it will involve exercise of some description, even if it's going for a walk, you know, and it will involve diet. And the more we can build that, I suppose, toolkit and resources for our own individual care recovery plan, even if we have those dips or we experience, more, you know, another episode of 
the, re- the window of recovery gets faster. So you're no longer in that trough for a longer time. You know, so there's an acceptance of in there, but I can recover and using, you, you know, diet and exercise in it. And I know I, I jumped in ahead here, Killian, just on that, but there is a strong link for me personally, um, you, you know, about uh, between food and uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 and I like that you um, mentioned there will be ups and down days and that happens for everyone. But I'm just going to throw out a question because you talked about the link between food and exercise. How would you get the balance right between both, that they're both kind of like that you're eating nutritious, healthy food on a day to day basis and you're exercising whatever way that looks like for you? How would you keep that going? Obviously, there will be ups and downs. You might get it in every single day of the week. But how would you keep it maintain? a good level of healthy nutrition and good exercise as well. Anyone can come in on that. If... Can I come in there and just say, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm nice to myself as well in terms of I do the best I can every day. You know what I mean? And some days it's maybe not as good as I could potentially do. And I don't give, kill myself over it. Do you know what I mean? I don't beat myself up if maybe I didn't hit, you know, everything that maybe I wanted to hit. And, but it's like Mike was saying in terms of, you know, it when when anyone does, I think the basics as well as they can do them, um, which is you know trying to eat as well as you can, maybe trying to get some rest, maybe trying to get some uh you know good sleep, you know, and different things like that. Like I had to find different ways to comfort myself because it wasn't that I still didn't need comfort at times. I just had to find other things instead of food to do it for me, you know, and you know, and I found different things to do that. So there was a bit of like self reflection around that, and maybe trying out things and seeing like what does work for me. Like I just bring it up because I often talk about it. Um, it, it, you know, in other workshops and stuff that I do, you know, like having a bath. Like there's some people, and it's just one of the most comforting things in the world. And I hate baths. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, so it's not something that would give me any sort of comfort. But actually, I do quite like a nice shower. You know, so you know, I had to find other ways to comfort myself, but. The link for me, what I find for myself is like Mike was saying, it's figuring out, you know, what works for me, you know, figuring out like if I if I eat well and if I try and get in a bit of exercise and stuff during the week, generally my mood is better. And it's not so much that um because I and I can let those things slip. And I said that before we came in here, this last two weeks I've been letting certain things slip. Um, and what I find is that gradually my mood and, you know, my resilience and my ability maybe to do other things is getting lower and lower and lower. And I've learned enough about myself in my own self-reflection and just doing work on myself to catch myself now sooner. You know what I mean? That I don't let it go on for months and months where I'm feeling like absolute shite, you know. So, um, you know, it is that reflection piece and stuff like that as well. But it is the basics for me anyway, eating well, getting in a bit of exercise and fight, you know, getting a bit of comfort where I, ha- where I can and having a bit of fun, you know, something a bit of fun is very important as well. Um, just really, really works for me. But they are all interlinked, like having healthy food or, you know, eating well, it's great. But I need the exercise as well. Um, and I need sleep as well. I need all those things to start to go well for me if I can. Um, and I just want to share my mother used to always say um, my mother was great for sayings. And um, she'd always say, you know, everything in moderation and sometimes including moderation. You know, so just in letting in that little bit of fun element to it as well, you know. So yeah, and Mike, I can't believe that you're that age because whatever your diet is doing for you, you look really, really well. That's yeah, if I, if, oh, if I could I, jump in there as well, yeah, too, work, I suppose um, what Claire brought up there about sleep is really, really important, too. And not just diet and exercise, but sleep is linked in there, too, because what you eat can definitely affect how you sleep. And I suppose we did a whole seminar on this about two years ago, and I got the opportunity to look into it in detail. And, you know, caffeine stays in your system for seven to eight hours. So really, if you're having trouble sleeping, you shouldn't be taking anything with caffeine after two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, If you eat a big meal before you go to bed within, say, two, three, two or less than three hours, we'll say, your body is still metabolizing that. That means your temperature goes up because you're burning your calories and it affects your sleep. You can't fall asleep or if you are asleep, it'll rewake you. Um, Alcohol, the same thing. One drink might seem to send you off to sleep, but your body still metabolizes it and wakes it up, wakes you up again. Um, Then there are things, you know, there's lots of old sayings like the glass of milk, hot milk at night will help you sleep and actually it's very true because dairy products have something called tryptophan in them 
and that helps you sleep. So having that old hot milk in the evening is actually a really good thing to help you go off to sleep. Uh, some of the fruits and vegetables, things like kiwis, bananas, um, plums, they have a little bit of uh, serotonin in them. So again, help you relax, help you go to sleep. So there's lots of things, you know, that you can do, but there are things you have to be careful of around sleep too. But definitely what you eat can affect that quite a bit. That's really yeah. good, Christine. Just the evidence based on that, like the more milk and everything else and the coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of coffee, so uh, I tried to switch to decaf towards the mid part of the day. So, uh, yeah, it does work for sure. So thanks a million. Mike, do you want to come in or will I pop on to the next? Happy enough to... uh, yeah, I will. And just on that, and I think it's really, and I suppose, again, uh, taking both as well. The caffeine is a big one, uh, again, and the intake of that. Um, and I used to drink maybe six, seven cups a day and had no issue sleeping in about Three or four years ago, sleep became disruptive and I couldn't figure it out. And then suddenly I said, well, maybe it's the coffee. And uh, so I have one coffee in the morning now. And unless I'm out for lunch or for some reason, I don't and I have a second coffee, but I've caught it out and it's transformed, the, you know, back to more regular sleep. And, um, you know, and just on the exercise bit as well. And again, it's, it's like the moderation piece. So I suppose it's not to beat yourself up if you're not successful. But what I try to do is, and again, like where we're located here, it's a busy side of town. And I have to travel a little bit to work. So I get up early, you know, I drive into work early. I'm usually one of the first pulling up outside the door. But I park up and I go for a walk. And I find that in that then, having had my porridge, you know, I'm now set up, but even the clarity in my head that it gives me just in that walk. So by the time I come back and I come into work, I'm calm, I'm relaxed and I can hit the ground running and I'm very even, you know, so making sure of I have my breakfast and I get in that little bit, 20 minutes, a half an hour. It sets the tone for my day. And I find that it's a simple thing really beneficial you know because like a lot of things sound simple but they're not easy you know whereas that is both simple and easy you know so i'm not climbing mount everest star you know i'm not running a half marathon you know so again it is that balance um yeah thanks gillian yeah. excellent thanks William. mike there is a question in the q a button here so i'm just going to go to this again if you have questions or comments please put them at the bottom there of your screen it's a q a button so this is for you, Christine. So I'll just read it out. So okay. just wondering what Christine would say are guidance on intermittent fasting or if people just don't feel like eating first thing in the morning. Okay, so um, intermittent fasting is very popular at the moment. Now, there is some evidence coming out around it being successful around weight loss. But I suppose to me, our bodies need constant nourishment. And when you're sleeping at night, you're often sleeping for eight to 10 hours, if you're lucky. Um, and that's kind of intermittent fasting as much as you should be doing in the day. So if you're not going to break that fast with the breakfast in the morning, then you end up, you know, like I was describing the hangry earlier, you won't be feeling great as well. And the evidence would say that people who eat breakfast in the morning get a good start to the day and it sets you up so that you don't overeat later in the day either. So breakfast is really important. And like I said, your brain actually needs glucose to function. So, you know, if you're going off to work or if you're a student or whatever, your brain is not working at full capacity if it's not getting some energy. So breakfast. And again, as I said, I didn't define breakfast as the usual, although everybody here is a big fan of the porridge and I love that. Um, but, you know, a mix of cereals, try to go for the whole grain ones, have a yogurt or a milk or something with it and a piece of fruit, or just take the fruit and the yogurt running out the door. Something simple just to get that bit of energy into you for your mind in the morning. And I know people say they don't feel like breakfast, but that's because your body's attuned to the fact that you don't usually have breakfast and it's shut down. So. When you start by prompting it with something small, like even the banana of the first few days, then your body will start to recognize, oh, actually, we are stopping for breakfast or we are having some energy. So it'll change a little bit for you. 
but I'd really encourage people to try and give their day a good start by having a wholesome breakfast. Excellent. Thanks, Christine. There, I just want to go on to maybe time management. Um, so would you have any tips for managing time effectively to just include healthy eating and regular exercise into the day or the week? I know we kind of touched on it, Mike, you kind of mentioned about going for the walk first thing in the morning or anything at all, managing the time because we all work in day to day, leading busy lives and trying to schedule in if it gets late in the evening or whatever it, it, it is. And it's just, it feels like it's too late to exercise or whatever it is. So would you have any tips on how you manage your time to, even if it's 10, 15 minutes of exercise, what do you do yourself? So I'll let anyone come in on that, if that's okay. Yeah, I'll take that if you like. Um, Thank you, Christine. Mike, you come in after, I, yeah, thanks. Yeah. I suppose I really encourage people to think about, it's an exercise I get people to do sometimes, about sedentary time. How long are you actually sitting? How long are you sitting at your desk? How long are you sitting in front of the TV or at the screen or with your phone? Or even some people like to sit and read. And there's nothing wrong with any of those activities, but again, just doing them in moderation, perhaps. And if you see that you are sitting for a long time, it gives you the opportunity to think about breaking it up a bit. So maybe it's even the five minutes you stand up and do a stretch or whatever, or the five minutes when you walk to the kitchen and get a piece of fruit out of the fruit bowl or something like that. Also, if you take a little bit longer, perhaps you could prep some food for tonight. You know, so if you're going to cook something that has veggies, etc., in it, you could do the prep of the veggies while you take a break from sitting in front of the computer or whatever. So there's lots of small ways that you can do it. Um, batch cooking is really good too so at the weekend perhaps you might have a little more time and you might cook for a couple of meals or you might cook for one meal and put the rest in the freezer for another day it's time management is really key to a lot of things so having a look at your day maybe keeping a diary about what time you spent doing different activities and having a look at that and seeing how you can fit the exercise or the nutrition piece in definitely that's really good, Christine. Really, really good information there just to manage time effectively. And I, I'm going to give a, my own tip as well. I have a timer. It's like a, I set a timer for two minutes on a task, for example, if I was to go stretch for whatever. But I never I, I never stop after two minutes when the timer goes off. I always continue for maybe five to ten minutes. So that was a simple trick that I got. I think it was Atomic Habits from James Clear's book that kind of just got me just for set the time for two minutes and you just continue on. You're not going to stop after two minutes. So hopefully that'll be helpful to someone out there Claire do you want to come in on the time management piece yeah um and I just I suppose it just when I think about the different phases of my life just say maybe when I had younger children and you know working as well and everything else and time can it can feel very time poor um and the focus on eating can be around like what making the dinner making sure the kids get something in their bellies you know and, and maybe at times I didn't focus as much as maybe what was going into my belly you know um but, you know, what I, again, you know, I have a bit more time and stuff now, but what I did find, though, was that a lot of supermarkets now and stuff like that are doing um prepared foods now. And it's not something that maybe, you know, you might be doing every night of the week, but like I get sick of it. I don't want to cook dinner seven days of the week. You know what I mean? I want to break you know, like at least one or two of the days. So those can be a nice option for me because it takes 20 minutes to usually to cook them and it might take 20 minutes for the takeaway. So I want to be more healthy. So, you know, I might do that. Um. What I find is, is that, again, I just try and do the best I can. Um, But one of the things I learned about my relationship with food was that I wasn't giving it enough importance either as well, you know, so that I was like if I was skipping breakfast or something like that, that then by the end of the day, I was nearly binge eating. You know, I was eating and I was eating like high sugar, you know, high fat content foods. And, you know, all I was doing was putting on more weight and stuff like that. So I had to start to rethink about that. And that's exactly like what Christine was talking about was I wouldn't have been a big breakfast eater or stuff like that. But once I actually got into routine and made a commitment of like, say, having a bit of breakfast, you know, having a bit of lunch, you know, at certain times. Now my body tells me when I'm hungry, you know, it tells me at those times it's gotten used to eating at those times. So now coming up to that times, I know, OK, it's time now I need to eat. So, you know, I will take that break for myself and it's good for my head as well. It gives me a break for maybe the day's work or wherever else I'm doing. But it really helps me to stay on top of my nutrition. When it comes to exercise, I find if I don't do it in the morning, it gets harder and harder as I'm going throughout the day to do it. You know, so if I get up, if I can get up and get something done and get it done, great. If I have to do it in the evening time. Claire's just glitchy there, I think. 
I might come back. I might, I might move on to you if Claire is just a bit glitchy. Yeah, there. So, yeah. And, um, yeah so, so while she's not there, but there, um, oh, she's get up coming back there now. Oh, did I? Sorry. Just you drop for a second, Claire. Yeah, work away again. Can... myself there. I was no, working. you're grand. Continue on <laughs> if you want. Yeah, no bother. You know, saying the steps, I can find the steps with you know the Fitbits and things like that can be you know a nice incentive sometimes. So even if it's like walking around the garden because I need I'm nearly at my target sort of thing. You know, it can be a nice way for me to just stay on top of being a bit more active. But everyone has different. Everyone has different amounts of time and there's a lot of demands on our time, you know, and a lot of people may be making demands of our time as well sometimes. So it can be really, really hard to prioritize the time for myself sometimes, you know, or particularly when my children were small to prioritize time to exercise or whatever it might be. But it's so worthwhile to do. You know, it really is a thing of not only, are you know, would I be, you know, am I hopefully doing it for myself, but hopefully I'm helping the people around me who I want to be, you know, healthy, healthy as well, to be healthy as well, you know, so I'm modeling maybe good behavior as well, you know, it really is that sort of, um, uh, you know, like doing what I do and what I say, do that sort of way. So I want to be, to, to be, uh, to be a model for that as well. Um, but finding what you can. So if it's 10 minutes, I would say, if it's like park the car, like, or, you know, if you're going driving to work, park the car a bit further away, walk up. If you're heading for the school, because they're part of the school walk, you know, bringing the kids to school that you could walk, um, you know, or straight the minute you drop the kids off, can you go and just throw in a quick 15 minute walk around the block or something? You know, I would say find whatever you can, because what I found in it was I even started doing small bits. It really gave me a want for more and then it led to more and more and more. And now for the most part, I have a regular routine around it. And I've kept that routine because it had such a positive impact in every other area of my life as well. That's great. Claire, can I, I, really can I just add something in there too? Yep. Uh, what Claire was saying about, you know, busy people with kids and all of that, not much time to spend. I always try to get people to focus on the household. So get everybody involved in this, you know? So we're back to school now. It's September. We're going to try and eat healthy for everybody in the house. And we might even save some money for, some special treat later you know maybe have the kids help you plan the menu and then you know there are lots of little tasks you can give even quite young children in the kitchen and um, I came across a study recently about uh, how people are losing cooking skills because they're not in the kitchen as kids you know moms are so busy coming in from work they just want to get the dinner on the table as quick as possible and having a child hanging out to you and asking you questions etc just takes too much time I'd encourage people to look at that and encourage children to get involved and even if they are quite small you could help them with setting the table and things like that and as they get bigger they can help with chopping the vegetables and obviously older then actually showing some of the cooking skills to them and it's really you know it's it's for them as well so that they have these skills when they go out to live on their own or whatever and I think it does take the pressure off you having to be the one making sure everyone's eating healthy as well so get the whole family in, on board with th the thing I really like that, Christine. That's great. Just getting people, everyone involved and they all have a piece to play in cooking the dinner or cleaning up or whatever it is. So that's great. And just to go back and clear the modeling, good behavior, good habits. I, I love that as well. That's really, really good. So hopefully that's useful for someone out there as well. Mike, are you going to come in there? Because there's just a few yeah, in the Q&A and I'll get to them. Then. Yeah, ju ju just briefly on that, because again, I know I gave the example of getting up early, going for the walk. But I find, and again, it's back to listen to your body when you're going to do exercise. So you will identify when you're at your freshest because I know by the time I'm out of here at five o'clock and I get home, the last thing I'm going to do now is turn, put on my walking shoes, turn around and go for a walk. So I do this. So feel when you're most energized and then maybe plan an exercise when you're most energized. And also I look, so when we look at mental health and having only, you know, enough brain power, because I'm at my best in the morning. So I deliberately schedule any important meetings, negotiations, big decisions that have to be made where they have to be trashed out. So those are all done earlier in the day. Unless I have to, I will not schedule in something like that where I need to be at my best. So again, it's been that being aware of 
where you're at in energy levels and when you're feeling the best. So and pl plan your day then around cardio. And a simple tip, if you say, I'm going to try a little bit of walking, but I'm lacking motivation, get a buddy. So if you come in next Tuesday night at seven o'clock, we're going for a walk. The last thing you'll want to do is let that person down. So it gets you out. So it's like as Killian said, once you start taking those first few steps, you're off. That's it. Thanks, Killian. That's really good. And that was one of the questions I had as well around motivation. So I might just delve into that for a minute or so, and then we'll go to the Q&A. What do you do when you feel, you're for someone out there listening, lacking in motivation and cannot put on the walk and shoes or whatever it may be to get up and go? I know it starts, it's, you've been talking about starting small or starting with a, the first step to get outside the door, but if someone can't even just even get that first step, like what would you recommend someone to do? And anyone can come in there if Claire, Christine or Mike, whatever. Well, what I will say is, is that like it, motivation is a great thing, but what could motivate you? So for me, when I started actually thinking about being healthy rather than losing weight was a better motivator for me, you know, because losing weight felt like a losing battle. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you know, and, you know, that, because so, so I suppose find your motivation for some people, it is about their mental health. You know, it's not about like the physical impacts of something. It's about the impact it's going to have on their mental health. And that's why they do it. So it's about the motive. It's like, I want to get fresh air. I want to see the, you know, I want to go for a walk with my friend, find a motivator that works for you, whatever it is, you know, um, and that's going to be very personal to people, you know, and it might be a case of, uh, these people told me that maybe I should try this for a while. So I want to give it a go for a week and see how I go, you know, but even signing up for a class once a week with something, I mean, Limerick Sports Partnership have run things all the time and there's walking groups going on all over the place all the time, you know, so there might be a group that maybe you can join that it's not about so much the walking. It might be about connecting with other people. It might be about meeting new people, but you're happen to be walking as well. So you're getting the physical benefits as well, you know? So it's that, it's like that maybe a bit of a reflection, what what can I find a thing that will motivate me? And once you find it, then use it and sort of have that conversation with yourself in your head. And maybe sometimes a bit of an argument saying you said you do it, so go do it now. You know, <laughs> sort of. So that's what I found for me. Like when I think about being healthy and the commitment I've made to being healthier for myself, and I have made that commitment to myself, then it, it it's easier for me to motivate myself. That's not to say that I do it every day now, lads. I'm not trying to tell you that I go out running and all sorts of things every day. I don't. I just try and do my best with it every day. That's excellent advice, Claire. Yeah. Thanks a million. Christine, do you want to come in? Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with Claire there. You can get to a point where you just feel like I can't do anything. But I think having that realization, as Claire said, she learned as she got older how to, you know, pull herself up when she felt a bit down. I think we have to start and try and recognize what kind of things do pull us down. And if eating is one of the small parts, then we can start with that one. And like I said, it could be as simple as having a fruit bowl. So you're having a couple of snacks of fruit. Just on that, to say the simple things, the actual very basic nutrition rules haven't changed in 50 years. I know we see all these fad diets and there's new headlines every week saying you need to do this or this superfood will cure that or whatever. But the basic guidelines, eat more fruits and vegetables, complex carbs, a bit of moderation, getting loads of variety. Those are the basic rules. And I think following those, it doesn't have to be restrictive either. If that happens naturally, because if you're eating loads of fruits and vegetables and complex carbs, etc., you're quite full most of the time and you're not craving other foods. So just taking that one little step, knowing yourself and knowing that this will help you. I think that's kind of the key, but totally we're all human and it happens to all of us. Super. Mike, uh, a, a, a simple one just on that. And I know, again, it's my own experience. I, I had my bloods done and, uh, and my cholesterol was gone high and it was imbalanced. And I was saying, I'm eating well, I'm getting exercise. This doesn't make sense. And I just introduced Monday to Friday eating mixed nuts and that restored the balance of my cholesterol. Simple as that. Nothing else didn't change another thing, you know. And it was just nuts. I, and I thought sure. that was it. The bloods came back, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I'm interpreting what you're saying there, Mike, and I'm presuming that your healthy cholesterol was yes, low and your yeah. unhealthy one, your lousy high. one. 
Yeah, and the when, was high. Uh, you know, and uh, so like what it was around, it was we just say it was around five pounds a euro and say I think I had a half percent good cholesterol, four and a half percent bad cholesterol. Yeah. And just by introducing the nuts, it balanced. You brought the balance back up. Yeah, absolutely. So what you were doing there was introducing those poly and muffas, the puffas and the muffas, as we call them, the polyunsaturates and the monounsaturated healthy oils and fats into your diet. And you probably were cutting back on the saturated fat, even though you didn't notice it, perhaps, you know, Um, and that that helps then. So, yeah, there are three types of cholesterol. There's your total cholesterol, which is the one figure they give you. And then the other Mm. two, your um, HDL, which is your healthy cholesterol, H for healthy, and your LDL, which is your lousy or your (laughs) bad cholesterol. Um, And something simple like that could change the ratio and make things different for you. But again, nuts are right on the pyramid there. Yeah. One of the basic foods, you know? So, yep. Well done, Mike. Lovely. Thanks a million. I'm just going to count the time because we're nearly at three o'clock. So I'm just going to go to some of the questions in the Q&A. So the first one is wonderful presentation. Thank you. I heard so many profound insights in 30 minutes. I have two questions. Is magnesium for menopause good for bone and joint aches? That's the first question. And then for children, is there any sensible advice around practicalities? How many meals do I let them have free reign and what to eat? They are 10 and 12. One has intellectual disability. Would you recommend vitamins? Thanks so much. I listened to the recording. I appreciate this topic. So there's a couple of questions in there. Christine, I don't know, do you want to answer some of that? Uh, yeah. The magnesium maybe first? Yeah, I could. I can yeah. deal with that one fairly quickly, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but okay. I actually did a seminar on menopause, and I know you mentioned that, Claire, as well, and it would be of interest to half the population at least. So what I'll do, Killian, is I can send on the link to that later if that's feasible. Absolutely perfect. Share, perfect. Share yeah, I can share it in the Rather the than going into all the detail on that Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Um, on the children, I think you said it's fussy eating is the issue, I think, there. And Let's one of them there, has a yeah. learning disability. Intellectual disability, yeah. Uh, Intellectual, so just kind of yeah. how many meals uh, do I let them have free, free reign and what to eat? And yeah, would you recommend vitamins? And that was the other. Again, I, there's a wonderful, um, she's kind of the guru of fussy eating in America. Her name is Ellen Satter. That's S-A-T-T-E-R. And she runs an institute and she has loads of information on fussy eating. And what she does is she looks at the whole environment. And also she has a a theme that she talks about, which is called the division of responsibility. And she has certain responsibilities she allows to the child, no matter how small they are, and certain responsibilities that for the parent. And once you fulfill those responsibilities, you've done your job. So not to beat yourself up and get over stressed about it because that's adding to the stress in the whole situation as well. So anyone that's got fussy eaters, I would highly recommend going and looking up Ellen Satter and uh, reading up, she has a blog, she does loads of stuff and she's published a few books and she's just wonderful when it comes to fussy eating. Excellent, Christine. And there's another question kind of similar to that as well. Any thoughts on air fryer, fussy child, only chips and goujons and toast age 10? Is this a better option? So maybe that could be the signposting to that, what you mentioned there. Yeah. Yeah. And just the air fryer. I haven't got one myself personally, but everybody tells me they're great. Um, I suppose it's another piece of equipment for the kitchen, I guess. But yeah, it seems like you can cut down on the fat with it too. And if it does a good job and makes the food tasty, then that's a bonus there, absolutely. But I would also recommend that person goes and looks up Ellen Satter and gets loads of information there on the fussy eating piece. Perfect. Thanks, Christine. Sorry to be throwing all the questions your way no now. Uh, there's a few comments here as well. Uh, a bit of housework is good exercise or running on the spot waiting for the kettle. It's brilliant. Mike, are you going to come in that? Sorry, I thought you were going to unmute. And it just remember, when I when I read that one in the chat, it reminded me of the the press photographers' um, awards, and there was a the, the winning photograph was an elderly gentleman, like I know he's, I think he, he like he's in his seventies or eighties, and during lockdown, the photograph was him running around doing loops in his own house, and it was a brilliant shot. It was just magnificent. Um, but here he was, he was running 
in his house. You know, it was fantastic. You know. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Mike. Well, can uh, I just say, if yeah, anyone has ever hoovered an entire house, you know how much physical exercise that is. If Absolutely. anyone was to spend the whole day cleaning your house from top to bottom, you know that's good physical exercise. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks a million, Claire. I'm just running through the Q&A here. There's a, there's a comment here. Lady in Cork runs a business similar to the US lady around fussy eating. Solid start.ie, a dietitian. Great advice. Another question, I think. I have two hard by legs every morning for breakfast. I've seen some info online saying this could be bad for cholesterol, but I find eggs great for mental clarity. Is two eggs a day okay? Um, Killian, just I'll take those last two. Uh, the yep. woman who suggested in Cork, the dietitian that runs Solid Start is actually a colleague of mine and she does a great job and she does, she runs workshops and, and all sorts of stuff as well. So www.solidstart.ie or she's on Facebook actually, Solid Brilliant. Start. Um, the eggs, the I think was one, the other one. Yeah. The eggs, yeah. So the recommendation on eggs is not more than six or seven in a week. So you could have one every day or you could have two every couple of days, something like that. And eggs are a really good protein as well. So yeah, good for us. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Christine, again. Um, just trying to find the kind of nuts. I think, Mike, you put that into the chat there as well. I'm nearly sure. So you're on mute there again, Mike. Sorry. So yeah, Aldi, it's just nuts. that description. I buy three bags. I buy the meat in Aldi. That's where I shop. So a bag of mixed nuts, bag of almonds, and a bag of Brazil nuts. And I mix them all in a bowl, and then I rebag them. And it's a lovely, really tasty combination. So I rebag them. I bring them into work, like as Christine said. So every day, apples, oranges, bananas, and nuts. And um, so those three bags of nuts will last me two weeks. You know, so it's not that I'm munching nuts, you know, but um, I'm still, but even it's still probably a lot for two weeks eating. Um, but they're de absolutely delicious. Um, yeah. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Yeah. There, just, yeah, Christine, go on ahead. Just yeah. to say on the nuts, absolutely, Mike, a variety, and that's kind of the word I've been using throughout a variety of nuts is a great idea because every single piece of food that you eat has a different package of nutrients in it, of different minerals, of different vitamins and all the other stuff. So having one type of nut won't be as valuable to you as having a variety. The only thing I'd say with nuts is if you're watching your weight, they can, the calories can add up pretty quickly with the nuts. So to watch the quantities, portion size is really important with them, but they are very healthy, absolutely. Brilliant. Thanks again, Christine. Uh, coming close to the end, so I'm just going to kind of try and fly through some of these as well. Uh, thanks. <clears throat> There's a comment here. Thanks for such an informative session. Really enjoyed it. Thoughts on having coffee first thing in the morning. Should I have water breakfast first? Christine, sorry. I'm going <laughs> to... Do you want to answer that again or anyone else? Okay. Um, <laughs> a cup or two of coffee in the morning is fine. You're not going to be falling asleep. <laughs> So um, that's fine. The, green, I, the reason I was giving out about ca caffeine there was because it stays in your system so long. And if you are struggling with sleep, then caffeine is something you don't want to have within seven or eight hours of going to bed. But in the morning, it's fine. And some people like the little jolt of energy that it gives you to get you out the door in the morning. And, you know, we talk about two liters of fluid a day and you can include one or two cups of tea or coffee into that fluids as well. So um, I try I try not to be one of these dietitians that are depriving people of everything. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely OK in the morning. Brilliant. Thanks, Christine. There's another comment here. I add nuts to salad, especially walnuts and f uh, flaked almonds. Crumble them on top and add them to yogurts. It's great. Another great idea. Uh, are there any foods that drain my energy or not? It's a question there. Yeah, high fat foods tend to make you feel very sluggish, you know. So I would say, yeah, if you're eating a high fat diet, you probably won't have much energy overall. You Perfect. get calories, but you won't get the energy. Brilliant. Thanks again, Christine. Uh, another question. Any foods you can recommend for serotonin? Um, yes, I had 
uh, serotonin. I know that the, the tryptophan turns into serotonin as well. They're quite linked. So the tryptophan foods that I was talking about, two kiwis actually at night is good for serotonin or t uh, and turkey, fresh cooked turkey or chicken actually has the tryptophan in it as well, which helps boost the serotonin. Um, so again, we're looking at say the fruits and vegetables mostly and your dairy foods and uh, some of the nuts and seeds as well. Okay. And just to say some of the nuts as well, the almonds in particular have good calcium in them. So important for our bones and stuff too. So. Brilliant. Thanks again, Christine. I'm just going to read out a few comments as uh, people as well. I've learned a lot today. Thank you so much to everyone. So another comment here. Well done, Killian, and all the guest speakers. Fab events. And I'm just looking through now. I know it's three o'clock on the button now. So, yeah. If there's anything that we missed, I suppose we can follow up in the learner pack and send it, like, even if there's any additional resources that we can send on. I'm just going to, Christine, I'll share the slides and I'll share the information on the recipes there. I'll just run through. Are you happy enough to finish up anyway, yeah. lads? Yeah, be okay. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Can I just say one quick thing, Killian? Can, I of suppose. Can, of course. I'm a believer, as I was saying, of getting the basics right all the time. So starting at looking at what we're eating and our eating habits rather than running to the health food shop and buying the supplements and all the other stuff. Start with those basics. Really important. Great. Thanks a million, Christine. Again, I'm just going to share this in a full view here. So that this is our Midwest Aries online community timetable. So this is the upcoming one starting next month. So range of different workshops, resilience, exploring anxiety, managing anxiety, self-care, building my resilience. So all of these workshops can be booked through Eventbrite if you haven't attended before. So it's midwestaries.eventbrite.com. .ie, or you can email email myself, killian.keen at hsc.ie. Then we have a workshop face-to-face. -face. This is coming up in September in the Lighthouse in Kilrush, County Clare. So it's the Anxiety Series, uh, Part 1 and Part 2. So Exploring Anxiety and Managing Anxiety. So that's in partnership with West Clare Mental Health Association in the Lighthouse, Kilrush. This is where, oops, this is where we will have our YouTube uh, our recording of this webinar on YouTube and our podcast link as well, the wellness panel. And this is all the links to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Midwest Series, where you'll find us. And the email is there for myself, Mike, Margaret, as well in Aries. And then this is Claire's. If you want to come in on this, Claire, for a second, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's my contact information there. Um, I provide free workshops to community groups and do talks and things like that as well. So please don't hesitate to um, contact me or if you think I can support you with any resources or anything like that or anything I've talked about today. If I can help you, I absolutely will. I don't have the answer to everything, but I might know the person who has maybe an answer for you. So please don't hesitate to give me an email or a call or a text if you think I can help you with anything. Lovely. Thanks, Millie and Claire. Much appreciated. So, Christine, I'm just going to share the recipes now so i'll go through that um so yeah you can see the screen there the 101 square meals yeah christine you're on mute there sorry sorry christine you're on mute there sorry <laughs> you're right no worries that's the 101 square meals there um that's the cookbook i was talking about earlier uh, that's on the Safe Food website, and there's loads of videos on there at safefood.net around how to put everything together. Um, as well as that, you can get a hard copy of it from the HSE or MABS or Safe Food. Um, it's got loads of recipes in there, and as I said, they're all budget friendly and really basic recipes, so quite easy to follow. And just one thing there, too if you're trying out a new recipe, always stick to the recipe the first time. You can do the alterations and, you know, play with it afterwards, but get it right the first time and see how it works for you. Just a tip. Um, the next one then is the yep. Cree. Yeah, this one here. Cree, which is the Heart and Stroke Foundation up in Galway. And they have some lovely recipes on there too that are heart healthy. So that's another good resource. Yeah. Fish and healthy is, baking tips. This is a really interesting one. So if you want to. Yeah, this, one, this yeah. is great. This is from the Irish Heart Foundation. And you can actually order these from the Irish Heart Foundation. And they come in wallet size. So you can stick them in your 
wallet when you're going shopping and you can use them to look at the labels because it gives you the values for sugar, fat, saturated fat and salt as well. And it gives it to you in the traffic light system there. So it makes it very simple. Perfect. And the next one is the Irish Heart. Uh, this is the Irish Heart Foundation as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And this is their healthy recipes. Another good source of simple, budget-friendly, healthy recipes. Lovely. And then the last one, Christine, thanks a million, is... Okay, so this is INDI, which is the Irish Nutrition and Dietetic Institute. And they have lots of healthy recipes on there. But even more than that, if you have an illness that's nutrition-related, they have diet sheets and they have fact sheets and all sorts of stuff there too. So massive resources on that one. Lovely. Thanks for going through them, Christine. And I will compile all of those links and send them in the learner back email by the end of the week as well. So we're well over time. So I just pass it to the panelists to say a quick goodbye. I just want to say thanks to everyone. It was a great webinar, really, really good discussion. Lots yeah. of great information. And sure, we'll see you at next month's webinar as well. And Claire will be doing that one as well. So a quick goodbye, yeah. I suppose, if everyone wants to. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Thanks, million.